right. so let's talk about pandemics for a while because I know. All right. I know you know. The, I think the last time you were on, maybe I don't know, like March or April, uh, we got into this discussion of uh, swine flu and pandemics and are we ready and what do we need to be ready. So, so I, I'll let you sound off about that and then we'll go. From well, there. the the information that we have right now is that the uh, pandemic has been increasing over the summer, which is very unusual for flus. And, and we're talking about the H1N1. Right. And just to be clear. And, and the Center for Disease Control and, and WHO say that there's going to be... WHO, not the rock band. Right. Like the World Health Organization. Okay. That's true. That's okay. true. Although they might try and move with a nice chord also. But they may. They however, may. be that as it may. So the uh, there's going to be uh, a serious pandemic. And what we need to do, in my opinion is make our city as safe as possible. And one of the things that I feel we can do is inoculate the children below 18 with uh, uh, a vaccine that doesn't have preservatives or they, they can inhale uh, the, the vaccine. Uh, so there's some issues about uh, the safety of, of vaccines with uh, preservatives yeah. in it. And by doing that, we can make our children safer. We can increase the amount of attendance in school through mm -hmm. the winter. So we, you want to make sure all children are inoculated in the city of San Francisco? All children. Probably costs us about a million and a quarter to do that. And we'll make right. two, three million dollars in, in extra uh, attendance revenue. So that can because offset back to whoever pays the original mill and a quarter. But the city has to view this as an issue for the city and not say, well, this is a school district issue or it's a public health issue. It's an issue for all of us. Plus, yeah. if we do that, we'll have a healthier workforce. So we'll have less days that we lose. Because teachers wouldn't get, to, is that what you're saying? No, regular workers. Okay, I regular mean, the workers kids remember. are the ones who spread these diseases. Right. I mean, we love the kids, but when it comes to disease, you get them from the kids. Right. And, and there's a study that show that if 69% of children were inoculated, uh -huh. you don't have to inoculate the seniors. So, so hmm. there's repercussions. Where's that, where's that study from? Uh, from Dayton, uh, from three years ago. Uh, when I first started doing my senior dad uh, webcast, right. that was one of the issues that I looked at because I was afraid of, uh, uh, of a flu pandemic at that point. And I asked the city what they were going to do and what the school system was going to do, and basically they're going to so shut So you're trying down. to get the ball rolling, though, on this whole idea of... of, of um, it's now. ...of um, immu immunization of the, for the children. Absolutely. It, have, you, have you had much success to the state? Well, we've, I, I've spoke to uh, several uh, city officials about it, and uh, so far people are interested, but we haven't developed much traction on the whole thing. And... One of the reasons is I think one group has to pay for it, and the other group gets the financial benefit of it. So you need right. to have people talk and find out a way to uh, marry the money because it's an overall gain for the city just in attendance versus what we expend. So it's right. a plus there. And then there's all the other pluses. Of, we're, of talking being healthier. The, we're not just talking about the kids in the public schools. We're talking about the 30,000 private school children as well, right? I, I don't think there's that many uh, private school ch children. Last so. I knew, it's somewhere, maybe it's 25 30, 30, now. 30%, but whatever, 30 children. children. I mean, we'll, let, let's not pick on kids because they're going to private school, No, no, okay? I, I hate, <laughs> They can go to private school, they can afford to pay their have, own. I don't have right. yeah. No, we're not doing maybe that. Maybe 10% of those kids in private school can afford to pay their own. But, we're talking about but every, we won't go down that road. every kid under 18. Every kid under 18? And the, okay. Million and a half. So, what about a shared source of funding? Because technically, if you're saying that the benefits will benefit work for the workforce, then the city will gain out of that investment. The city will gain from it many ways, and it's a matter of us energizing everyone to get there. Uh, today, the Obama administration said they're going to put two billion dollars into uh, pandemic. So, I don't know what form. So they're taking it seriously. Everyone should. Yeah. It, it's a, well, I'm it, just saying, you know, I, they are. Absolutely. I'm not saying everyone is. I'm saying that, that it sounds like the Obama administration is. Absolutely. Right. It, it's, it's a clear and present danger. 
Mm-hmm. It, it, we have to change the way we do things. We have to teach kids to wash their hands frequently, to cough into their sleeve. We have to train people not to shake hands because the germs transfer when you shake hands. Right. Okay? We have to change our patterns so that we stay healthier. Now, this flu, unfortunately, attacks children more than it attacks adults. Okay? I guess we've built up immunities. Right. And we have to protect our children. Right. Right. It, it, it's, and we can't wait. And you can't wait to see whether it comes and whether it gets really bad before you act. Right. And, it's, you know, and a million and a half doesn't sound like a lot of money, even in this budget crunch, particularly if you're going to leverage, leverage it against uh, federal dollars. Right. So, so, I mean, it sounds like something that can be done. Hopefully, you know, the Board of Supervisors and the Mayor's Office and the school district would pick that up. This actually could be a perfect issue for the... Uh, city school district subcommittee, whatever that is, that, <laughs> that never does anything. But this would be, this would be a policy issue that they could actually probably pull together, which I doubt they will. But it would probably have to land in the in the lap of the board of supervisors. Oh, uh, you never can tell where you're going to find leadership. Uh, well, okay, yeah, maybe I'm making an assumption there. <laughs> I don't know if that committee is going to supply, supply the leadership, but I think there are plenty of people, plenty of elected officials in this city who could step up and provide. It, it all makes good sense for us. Yeah. It's how we spend our money that's important. Right, right. So, Stan, I'm with you. we got about a